Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas, this is How to Make an RPG in Unity, and welcome to episode 17. So this time we're going to look at our spider more into its AI, because previously all we'd done was create this tiny little script, which basically just looks at the player, and that was the beginning of the AI component that we're going to use. So this time we're going to really develop it to allow the spider to kind of come towards us, and attack us, and stop if it's out of range, and all kinds of things like that. So you'll notice at this point I've switched over to Visual Studio. The reason being is because I think it's as of Unity 2018.1, the Visual Studio will be what you will code in. It used to be MonoDevelop that will come bundled with um, Unity, but I don't think that's going to be included any longer, which is a shame, I do think, because I do prefer MonoDevelop. I find Visual Studio a little bit of a pain sometimes. It, it sometimes freezes, it sometimes lags behind but hopefully we won't have any of them problems. So this script is where we're going to go from at this point. We need to add in a couple more variables to this. So the first one we have is the player. The next one we're going to need is a target distance. So the distance from the enemy to the player. And yes, you've guessed it, the enemy will be able to use a raycast. So public float target distance semicolon so basically how far it is uh, the next one obviously would have to be how far we can allow before action is taken so public float allowed range semicolon uh, next one we're going to have is going to be the enemy itself which is going to be a game object the enemy semicolon next one is going to be the enemy speed so public float enemy speed so we can change this as and when we need to whether it be real time or from this script itself next thing we'll have is something called an attack trigger now the attack trigger is going to be a case of where if it's mode zero maybe it's okay if it's mode one then it can come attackers maybe it'll have mode two three four and depending on how advanced you want to create your AI script, you may have 10 or more modes. So we're going to have this as an integer. Public int attack trigger. Semicolon. And the last one is going to be that raycast that I spoke about a little while ago. So public raycast hit. And I'll just call it shot. Semicolon. Now most of the coding is going to be done in the void update. We already have this transform look at the player. So after this, what we need to do is send out that raycast. So if any brackets physics dot raycast and then in brackets we need to set the transform position. So transform dot position and comma and then transform direction because we need it obviously to go forward because the spider is going to be looking at us so transform dot transform direction in brackets vector three dot forward and comma and then we need to output this as the shot which we have defined here variable so out shot and then at the end of that because it's an if we have the open curly bracket and hopefully what we'll now be able to do is we'll make our target distance equals to that shot distance so target distance equals shot dot distance so now the target distance can be used to see if it is below the allowed range. So if target distance is less than or equal, should I have less than or equal to just in case the allowed range, then perform the following. So basically if we're within range of what the spider can see then we're going to set the enemy speed to a number higher than zero so it can move towards us so enemy speed 
equals. I think I'm going to have it quite a low number because if I have it high number, it's going to come hurtling towards us quite fast. And I'm going to start off with a 0 0.02, I think, with an F and a semicolon because we want to see what happens. Next thing we need to do is basically we now need to see if the attack trigger is, let's say, 0 is idle, 1 is attacking. We need to see if it is equal to 1. If it is, then we play the walking animation. So, if attack trigger equals, that's double equals, to 0, then we do the following, which will be the enemy dot get component and in sorry not brackets so we need get component and it's going to be animation in spiky brackets animation oh and close bracket and dot play and in brackets and quotes we need to put what we have <clears throat> as the walking animation so if we go back to our spider here it's down as just walk so walk and once we've played that that's fine so that should play uh, on a continuous loop while the spider is actually walking towards us so semicolon and after that what we need to do is make the spider literally come towards us and we need to make it move towards and we can use that using a vector 3 so transform dot position equals vector three dot move towards and in a bracket we put transform dot position comma the player dot transform uh, dot position it should be I think and we do that at the speed that we have set in enemy speed so what's happening here is if the attack trigger is equal to zero, which it will be when the script starts, the enemy will play the walking animation whilst moving towards whatever the ray cast is looking at, in which case it will be us. So semicolon at the end of there, <coughs> excuse me. After that, we can close it using close curly bracket right there. And um, let me see. So. I'm trying to figure out now what we need to do if uh, we're out of range of the enemy. So we're going to have to put it here. So you can see this closed curly bracket relates to this one, saying if it's within the allowed range. So we need to do an else statement there to say if it isn't in the allowed range. In this case, what we do is put enemy speed equals zero semicolon and then we need to set the idle animation of the spider because we don't want it to walk anymore because it would just be walking on the spot which would look a bit silly so the enemy dot get component uh, oops so that should be spiky brackets animation open close bracket dot play in brackets and quotes it should be uh, just idle. So, I-D-L-E. And obviously if you're using a different model with different animations, your animation name will reflect whatever model you have in the game. Um, so, that closes that one up. And let me see. This should be... I think So I'm going to save that script there just to make sure that plays okay. So I'm just looking through it now to see um, what we're going to do, because obviously we're going to need to have an attack uh, at some point, but we're going to need to have uh, a collider, as it were, because we need the collider to be within the spider's area, his aura, his space, whatever you want to call it. So let's head back to Unity and see if we do have any errors. Hopefully we shouldn't. It's taking a minute there to think. And yeah. I think we're all good. So what we'll do is we will try out this now. So let's just set um, that variable there, the enemy. So it's going to be the spider itself, because remember, the enemy here is what we define as having the animations. So the animations are attached to the spider. So let's drag the spider over there. And now 
let's press play and let's run over to the spider and let's see what he does so hopefully hopefully this should work you can see what's happening here with the ai though it's slowly developing more and more so we'll obviously build upon it a little bit more as we get in so we can see our spider over there and as we get closer and closer you can see it's not quite working just yet so what i think we're going to have to do is we're going to make sure uh, the spider itself and the script is working correctly so we know this is working here but we need to see if this raycast is working as well so here we should be able to see the target distance is ah, i think i know what may have happened there i've not set the allowed range what i'll set the allowed range as i'll set that as 40 i think and save that script i think that may be where we've gone wrong because I've just noticed here it is set to zero. And obviously, I haven't explained that you can set this to whatever number you would want. So I'm going to try 40 for now. And you can see at the moment, the target distance is currently 101. So obviously, when it gets to about 40, it will start walking towards us. So let's get a little bit closer. And there we go. You can see the spider coming towards us now. So I'm not sure about the speed. The speed looks a little bit slow. So we're going to increase that. It looks like we may need to maybe double it a bit. Let's try 0 0.05 and let's see how that goes. So the whole idea of this is you shouldn't really build an entire script and then come to try and test it all out at once. It's always best to kind of build the script bit by bit and then test each section out at a time. So you can see it's getting close to the spider starting to walk towards us that's pretty decent I'm happy with that so what I'm going to do is run away and allow the target distance to go back over 40 and we should hopefully see that the spider has stopped and he stopped following us get a bit closer again and he'll come after us head backwards again and he should stop now so we can see that what we've got for the AI is currently working. So now we need to build in an attack for the spider. So we're going to do that by creating after void update down here. So we need this closed curly bracket. We're going to have an uh, on trigger enter we'll use actually. So void on trigger enter open close bracket. Um, no, we don't want it private. We'll keep it as that. Uh, yep, that's fine in there. So in this void, what we'll do is we'll just basically have attack trigger equal to one, semicolon. And then obviously the inverse of that is going to be on trigger exit. In fact, I don't even think we really need that in the parentheses there. So we can get rid of that. So let's have void on trigger exit. Uh, no, again, we don't need it private. That's completely fine. Uh, we don't need that. So on trigger exit is going to be attack trigger equals zero. Attack trigger equals zero semicolon. And let's save that there. Now, what I think I need to explain here is back in this script up here in the update, what we're going to need to do is have another if statement, which basically says it's checking if the attack trigger is one. And I think we will do that. Um, so this one, that's fine. That's completely fine. So we'll do it here. So at the bottom, just before the final close curly bracket, we'll do that if and in brackets attack trigger is equal double equal again to one then we do the following so if it's equal to one what we need to do is set the enemy speed back to zero so enemy speed equals zero now this may not necessarily work because don't forget it may conflict with this here but again 
probably in the next episode when we get even more into AI, we'll work a little bit more with stopping things going on within the same script. But it's always good to have this here because we can always come back to it to make things easier in the long run. So in this attack trigger, what we need to do is basically make the spider attack. So attack, sorry, not attack trigger. <laughs> it should be the enemy, the enemy dot get component animation close bracket dot play <clears throat> and i think it's just called attack on the spider i believe let's have a look um yes it's just attack so we can just put the word attack in there we have the semicolon and that close curly bracket will close that if statement that will close the update so yep that's all looking good so you can see what's happening here. We're building up this AI script. So, so far this episode, we've managed to create just a spider looking at us, going from that to actually make it come towards us, and it will attack us when we're kind of reaching. So to do that, we need to create the trigger around our FPS controller. So what we'll do is right-click on the FPS controller, 3D object, and I'm going to go with cylinder. Double-click. And this cylinder is going to act as like an aura that surrounds. I'm going to have that ticked as is trigger. And I'm going to shrink it down because it is too tall. Uh, so let's have that as point two maybe. Uh, that should do. I'm also going to remove the capsule collider. And I'm going to add component. And I'm going to go to physics. And rather than have that capsule collider, we're going to use a mesh collider and make sure we tick convex and is trigger there. The reason I want to use a mesh collider is because the capsule collider kind of makes extra room at the top. You would have seen like a kind of like a dome of the green outline, which was the collider, whereas the mesh collider will surround the actual object, which is what we want. So you make this as big or as small as you want. So basically what's going to happen is when the spider hits this area here, it will attack. So if we have this as three by three and then untick mesh renderer, uh, when we press play, we should be able to head over to our spider. And obviously as we get close, he will start walking towards us. There we go. And as he gets into our aura, he will start attacking us. So the reason this has happened now is because, as I say, this cylinder, which I will put the mesh renderer back on, you can see that the spider has collided with it. So you've got to make sure with this specific cylinder that uh, you don't make it too small, you don't make it too big, because like, let's pull away from the spider now. You can see he's still coming after us. Oh, and he's attacking us there. And he's coming after us again. If we were to make this scale pretty huge, so let's have this as like 10 by 10 maybe. When we head over to the spider in this case, he will attack us even though he is nowhere near us. So it's a case of getting your scale just right. So you'll see what I mean now as we head over to the spider. Because the area is quite large, as we get a little bit closer, he will attack even though he is quite far away from us. And on the uh, inverse of that, if we have it far too small, he'll, he really won't be able to get near us because we'll have the collider of the first person controller. So I think having it about three is a good number. I'm going to save my project there. So next episode, we're going to have a little bit more of a look into the AI. Uh, we'll set up this NPC to give us a quest once we have the sword, and we'll start looking at a different style of health bar. Because at the moment we have that whole Zelda thing going on. Uh, I'd like to experiment maybe with a health bar somewhat similar to something like Oblivion or Skyrim. And obviously when we go from there we'll start building things like a magic bar and experience stamina and all stuff like that. So until that next episode guys, thank you very much for watching.